Hello. Hey, is this Nikki? Yes, it is. How are you doing, Nikki? Uh, this is Eric Scott. Welcome to the program. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, uh, be joining us right now is the 2011 Penthouse Pet of the Year, Miss Nikki Benz. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, we are definitely appreciate you taking some time out and hanging out with us. So, uh, so everybody knows now that Nikki is the official Penthouse Pet of the Year. Uh, you know, first of all, you're, you're in Penthouse, which I know is, was, a, was a dream of yours. And then all of a sudden, you get elevated to the status of Pet of the Year. Uh, wh what's that honor like for you, Nikki? Um, it's uh, beyond anything I would have ever imagined. It's a great honor. It's a very elite status. I believe there's only been uh, 44 past pets of the year so far. So it's, uh, it's an elite status, and I'm honored and, of course, very thankful to Penthouse and my fans. Now, how do you exactly get a phone call uh, like that? What's, what's that phone call like uh, that, you know, it comes up and it says, hey, you're going to be the uh, the penthouse pet of the year. I mean, how did that conversation come about? What was your reaction? Um, I was filled with joy, and um, I almost fell out of my chair, and I was uh, just very happy. <laughs> I was in shock, actually, um, because I didn't expect it. And when you don't expect something, I think folks are like, that's the best, you know. Um, the news was just surprisingly shocking, and I, I was ecstatic. Extremely happy. Yeah, I, I would imagine that you know that'd be have the like one of the coolest things ever is like yeah you know, yeah you get to do penthouse you know you get to bear all for you know for your fans and uh, you know you get to you get to you know put yourself out there and if it's a dream it's a it's a great dream and you know to realize it uh, but then to get an added honor being the pet of the year you're better than everybody else you realize that you're better there's <laughs> nobody else who appeared in that magazine last year it was better than you you were number one. That's very sweet, but <laughs> I don't look at it that way. I'm just, you know, I'm just grateful. I mean, it's just an honor, but I don't think I'm better than anyone else. I mean, every single pet um, this past year has been, you know, beautiful. And um, like I said, it's just an honor just to be the Panos Pet of the Year. Unexpected. So um, I definitely look forward to my you know, year with Penthouse the next year. Well, I'm going to disagree with you. You're number one. In my opinion, you're <laughs> number one. Forget everybody else. Nobody else matters except for Miss Nikki Benz. Uh, oh, I, thank you. I think you just made my night by saying <laughs> that. <laughs> well, I know you just had a birthday recently, so happy belated birthday uh, from, uh, from a couple weeks ago. But, you know, we didn't get to talk to you, so happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. It's been like a, a month-long birthday. Like every day I celebrate it. So. Yeah. Now, do you think that your your connection with the audience has been greatly increased because of the Internet? I mean, has the Internet really brought you together with people? I mean, you you know, I see that you Twitter. Uh, I see that you use Twitter. And, yeah. uh, you know, you have Facebook. And you have all these ways of connecting with your fans. Do you find that it connects you a lot uh, more than maybe somebody 20 years didn't have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel because of the Internet, I'm that much more popular, and I'm that much more out there, um, whereas 20 years ago, um, girls got popular only through magazines and video, and now I have this extra outlet that's absolutely incredible, such as Twitter. I mean, Twitter is just amazing what it does to your popularity and just even just to keep in touch with my fans, you know? Right, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, was, I was looking over this, this information on you. Now, I'm just going to tell everybody, you know, your, uh, your statistics here, okay, just in case everybody okay. doesn't know you. Uh, you're five five, 110 pounds, 34D, 24-34. you got blonde hair, hazel eyes, and you're, uh, you're Ukrainian. Yeah, I mean, it's almost correct. Um, it's funny because different Internet sites have different info on me, and I'm like, it's hilarious. Not, no one's, like, exactly uh, right. <laughs> but I am Ukrainian. I was born there, and I was um, raised in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. I'm actually um, Canadian by nationality. I'm 118 pounds, a little heavier than 110. 110 is almost like, um, I don't know, that's too skinny. <laughs> well, I think I think what happens is, uh, you know, if I may be so bold, I think what happens is they discount the weight of your breasts. Uh, they they cut I, those. You know what? You're right. You're right. Because <laughs> I think my boobs are like four pounds each for sure. 
Yeah, I'm, and, uh, I'm actually a 34 double D. So oh. let's, let's give my boobs some credit here. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, I saw some videos of you, uh, you know, doing my research. This is this is what people understand. This is my research. My research is going around uh, whenever I have an interview, and I gotta, you know, I gotta look at it all. And I, I ha I'm married, so you know, I, I gotta explain to my wife uh, while I'm watching your videos. She's like, "What are you watching?" I'm like, "I'm watching. Uh, I'm show prepping." That's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just prepping. And and she looks at me like, what? Did, you, did your wife help you research? Uh, no. Uh, I I try to keep my wife as far away from the radio show as I possibly can. Uh, for some really good reasons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just by my choice. Um, now, what about you? You married? Boyfriend? Anything going on there? No, I'm not married. I'm single. Uh, I mean, I date occasionally, but. To tell you the truth, I would feel sorry if I had a boyfriend. I would feel sorry for him because I'm so unavailable. Uh, I'm just traveling a lot and I'm really busy, so I kind of don't have time for a boyfriend. I got, I got you. I got you. You know, I always wondered that though. I mean, you know, whenever you have relations with a guy, um, and you know, if if he knows who you are or not, doesn't really matter. Um, are, are you the same? I mean, is it the same? It's one thing I've always kind of wondered. Is it the same? Like, can you perform the same uh, with, a, no, with a regular no. guy? No, I don't because I date civilians, so I don't date male porn stars. So, obviously, they're going to fuck um, like normal people do. <laughs> right, right. They're not going to put a performance for me. And plus, if, if I were to have sex with them the way I do at work, I would probably break their cock. I'm serious. It's just too intense and hardcore. I got you. Now, uh, what's the? What would you say is the smallest guy you've ever been with? Uh, I don't know. I don't really measure their cocks um, on film. Maybe six inches. Six inches. And but you wouldn't. You can't think of anybody. You know, real life uh, situation. Uh, you know, guys are smaller than that. Um, well, the average penis is five to six inches, and I think that's what pretty much I get at home. I mean, I'm happy with the six. I was going to say, is that, I mean, is that pleasurable? What's more pleasurable to you, you know, the, the guys that you're working with or the guys that, you know, you're with uh, regularly? Um, it's all pleasurable. I mean, I, because I really enjoy my work. Um, I'm going to admit, though, like the really big guys that I work with, you know, while doing scenes, it does hurt. Like, it's not, you kind of got to work it in slowly, you know, so I kind of have to prep myself. Whereas at home, it's not, like, painful. <laughs> right, right. Not that it's painful at work, but it's just that what people have to understand, like, yes, you see me doing a hardcore scene, but prior to that scene, I'm doing still photos. So I get to kind of, like, work it in there and uh, adjust myself to the big cock, you know? Right, right. <laughs> now, you, you signed on... Uh, uh, you know, at a pretty young age to do, you know, to do porn, like pretty much almost right after you're legal, right? Like just a few years, like 21, 21 22? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty crazy. Uh, you did your, your first on-screen sex scene uh, in a movie uh, called Strap on Sally 20 with Jean, Gina Lynn. Um, yes. And how, how was that experience? I mean, you, you, your first scene was with a girl, wasn't even with a guy. How was that? It was awesome because I was just kind of wanting to get it, started. I was very excited and I was just extremely excited and I think I did a great job considering it was my first scene and everyone else was impressed as well because literally right after that scene I got signed to a contract by that company. Nice, nice. Now, I mean, since then, you know, you've taken home a lot of awards, uh, you know, 2006, you know, uh, well, you nominated all over the place. You know, I'm looking at this like you're nominated for everything: best couple sex scene, best supporting actress, best tease performance, best three way, hottest body, porn star website of the year. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and uh, that's that's impressive. And and most impressive was the fact that uh, to date, at least according to this site, to date, 125 films. Um, honestly, I don't know how many movies I've done, and I'm gonna explain why um because sometimes i'll do a scene for a company and they'll take that one scene and put it in 20 different movies believe it or not wow 
So it, there's a lot of compilations. So I don't know how many actual movies I have out there, but I'm going to think somewhere around 100, maybe more. Um, it's more like really how many scenes are done, which is definitely over 100. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I was thinking about this uh, you know, earlier this week, going, man, you know, if I was a girl and I was in porn, you know, I, I would create my own little trophy, so to speak. I would, I would get that, you know, that, 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 uh, what's that stuff called? You know, the thing that you can, you can mold, you know, molding. And I would go, okay. and I would go, like, all the guys that I've been with, and I would ask them, you know, hey, can I mold your cock? And, you know, you take the cock mold, and, you know, you make a mold of their cock, and then, you know, you stick it up on a shelf, and there's your own trophies. Like, here's all the guys I've been with, like a big trophy case. Man. Really? You put that much thought into that? That's just nasty. <laughs> well, I, it was... I don't want their cocktail. Come on now. Besides, it's all, seriously, on screen, I, I call them my on screen boyfriends because mm -hmm. I always work with like five to seven the same guys. They just rotate. Right. <laughs> and like, I've known them over the past seven, eight years. I've been in the industry for eight years. It's like the same guys that I work with. So it would be like, the same cocks over and over and over again nah, <laughs> in you. my room. I got you. Now, I I, uh, I know you know a little bit about internet radio broadcasting. Uh, you were a host on a, on a show uh, a little while back, yeah? Yes, true. And uh, and how was that experience for you? I mean, you know, you're, you're on there. It's uh, It was a little bit more geared towards sex, so, you know, at least, you know, an area, obviously, you know, you're well. I, I should be on that side. I know a lot about sex, too. I'm not good at it, but I know about it. Um <laughs> But no, I mean, like, how was that experience for you? You know, also, you know, did the Fox Sports uh, show called Cubed. Uh, so how these things, uh, how these other things for you working out? Um, well, the K6 radio was fun to do because it was something new, and um, I liked doing it. I liked talking about sex and taking phone calls from fans and just talking the shit with them. You know, it was a lot of fun. Um, I was, I mean, maybe down the road I'll do it again. I don't know if time allows. And then... Cubed is um, a show on FoxSports.com, and also uh, Fuel TV picked it up. I, I still do that. I signed a two-year contract with Fox Sports, so that's a blast because it's totally mainstream, and it's just nice to see like how the adult world works, how the mainstream world works, and I just really enjoy like all aspects of my career, including you know Cubed because it's totally mainstream, nothing to do with adult, and it's a nice uh, change once in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so now that means that you, you got to know some stuff about sports, right? Yes. We we talk about sports. I mean, the show is scripted to an extent. We talk about sports. Uh, we talk about what's, you know, relevant in the sports world. But we also have a lot of big stars on there. Like, we've had Denzel Washington. We've had Mark Wahlberg, Snoop Dogg. So it's, um, it's fun. <laughs> Are you a football fan? Um, I am, but um, because I was brought up in Canada, I think I'm more of a hockey fan. Ah, hockey fan. And what's your favorite team? I'm going to say the Maple Leafs because no matter how bad they are, I have to support my hometown team. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I'm personally a Penguins fan. That's okay. Uh, you know, we all have our, oh, okay. you know, we all have our own thing. Uh, no, it's cool. Uh, so now there was a time, apparently you had a, a photo shoot. Um, that you had a, a really bad head cold and, and you busted your knee, right? And so, like, you're going through and you're doing this photo shoot, act like everything's all good, but, I mean, like, you're sick, your knee's just, you know, hurting you. How did you get past that type of thing? How do you get through a, a whole shoot feeling just just horrible? I mean, you know, you're trying to act all sexy and be all cute and everything, and you're like, God, I feel like ass. Are you setting up this scenario for me, or did, did this happen? <laughs> uh, according to this report uh, that I had gotten, that you went through a serious head cold and a busted knee, uh, and then you... Uh, I don't re honestly, I think that's false. I don't remember that happening ever. Uh, somebody <laughs> in the chat room wants to know how your Pomeranian dog Toby is. Oh, he's amazing. He's right here. He, he wants to uh, piece of the action. Like, he's such an attention whore. <laughs> He's like his mom. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with that. So now, uh, going back to you know the penthouse, what is uh, what is some of the duties as the penthouse pet of the year? When what do you what exactly is it that that you do uh, for penthouse in your your reign uh, of you know being the pet of the year? Okay, well, I'm my contract with them is completely different from any other penthouse pet of the year. I'm the first hardcore performer 
he has signed an exclusive contract with Penthouse. So for the next uh, year or so, I will be filming exclusively for them for Penthouse.com, um, from magazine layouts to hardcore videos to touring the world 